in the last video we analyzed these two functions just by looking at their graphs and we came to the conclusion that that the extrema of the, on the graph of the left so the maximum and minimum for this graph on the left the the maximum and minimum happened when the slope of the function was zero meaning the derivative was zero and over here the the extrema happened when the derivative was undefined or did not exist and, and the point had no slope the maximum and minimum points had no slope okay so let's let's continue with that idea and let's see if we can put it to use so if I gave you the function f of x equals x cubed over 3 minus x and I said find when f of x is 0 or f sorry find f prime so let me just type that out find when the derivative equals 0 okay so how are we going to do that? Well, let's start by taking the derivative, right? So f prime of x, this should be easy for us at this point, is going to be equal to x squared minus 1. The 3 comes down and, and those two canceled. You're left with x squared minus and then the derivative of x is just 1. Okay, and now we want to find out when f prime of x equals 0. So let's just set this equal to 0. I'm going to change colors. I don't really like the color I have right here. So this is going to be x squared minus 1 equals 0. And we can factor x squared minus 1 using the difference of squares. Oops. x plus 1 and x minus 1 equals 0. And now our solutions are, are is pretty easy. We have x equals, oops, x equals negative 1 and 1. When x is negative 1 and when x is 1 the derivative is equal to 0. Okay, that was easy enough. Our, our problem is done. We did what was asked of us. Find when the derivative equals 0. When the derivative is equal to 0, when x is negative 1 and when x is 1. Well, uh, let's try and look at that a little bit more in depth. I mean we did our job but let's let's take a look. So this is the graph. I'm just gonna well, I guess I'll put it over here. This is the graph of x cubed over 3 minus... This stupid program. So this is the graph of x cubed minus 3 uh, over 3 minus x. Here it is. Okay, now, let's take a look. We said that the derivative is equal to 0 when x is negative 1 and when x is positive 1. Okay, great. So let's, let's just kind of draw a line here from negative 1 up, up to the graph. So the derivative is 0 there and then from 1 down to the graph. So the derivative is 0 there. What does that mean? Well, that means at this point the slope is horizontal and this point the slope is horizontal and it turns out that those are our maximum and minimum points I think it's pretty easy to see that from just from the graph itself so we we use the fact that we that maximum and minimums happen when the derivative is equal to zero to find them we we've t had a function we took its derivative set it equal to zero and and Lo and behold, we found our maximum and minimum points. Now, there is a, a question that maybe you have, which is, what do you mean maximum and minimum points? There, there's a, a point up here that's higher, right? This point here is higher than our so-called maximum. And, and this point over here is lower than our so-called minimum. So, so what's going on here? There, this is not the maximum of the function. It's not the highest the function is. Well, there, there's something called a relative maximum and, and relative minimum, or in other words, relative extrema. So let me, let me type that on the side here. Relative extrema. And if you're in a calculus class, I'm sure that you, you heard about relative extrema. And what's going on is that 
what we can say in, in, in basic terms is that relative to what's around this maximum point. So if we were kind of to chop this graph up, let me do it this way. If you just looked at, at the, these points in between these two lines here, well, then everything just to the left of the maximum and everything just to the right of the maximum are lower than the maximum. So in other words, this maximum really is higher than everything that's around it in, it, in its own close vicinity. So relative to what's around it, this is a maximum. So we call it a relative maximum. And down here, this is a relative minimum. Because relative to what's around it, it's the lowest point. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully that makes sense to you. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about a little bit more about this concept of setting the derivative equal to zero and solving. We found two, two x values that seemed to be, to be pretty important, the negative one and the one. Those gave us our maximum and minimum. And it turns out that, that those numbers are important. They have their own special name. So we'll talk about that in the next video. See you then.